What's up guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome for those of you who are new here. I'm Katie and on today's video, I'm going to be sharing my goals for quarter two with you guys. So I'm not normally one to do quarterly goals. I did make annual financial goals for the year of 2024, but I haven't been doing quarterly goals, but I got this idea from Kiera at Budget and Grow. I will have her channel linked below if you want to check her out. She is a phenomenal human being. She's very humble. Um, she's persevered through a lot of hardships in the last couple of years, and she has paid off credit card debt in that time while she's been going through a lot of um, difficulties in her life. And she also um, makes it a priority to send money back home to her parents who are living in Peru, which I think is just so amazing. I feel like so many people now do not take care of the older generations like we should, and it's just so wonderful to see her doing that. So if you want a amazing human to support who is also budgeting and working on goals, please go follow her because she deserves the support. But I got this idea to do quarterly goals from her. She has been doing quarterly goals for a while. And I was like, you know what? I think that would really help me to do quarterly goals um, and have like a focus for the quarter rather than just looking at our financial goals all at once. Plus we're starting the financial order of operations in quarter two. So I thought it would be fun to Kind of track how much we are paying off as far as debt goes by making some goals and checking in with them at the end of this quarter. So that is kind of the reason why I wanted to try this and see how we like it. I honestly love making goals. I love spreadsheets. I love um, checking in on goals because I find that to be really motivating. So I'm not surprised that I thought this was a good idea. You guys probably aren't surprised that I'm making yet another goal video as well. But to me, I just really love talking about goals. It helps me stay motivated and stay on track for the things that I know that I should be doing. So let's go ahead and go over to the spreadsheet and I'll show you what we're going to be working on in quarter two. So I did make some financial goals and some personal goals. I have the financial goals listed first because let's be honest, that's probably what most of you guys are here for. So the first financial goal that I have is to pay off or to put 50% of our income to debt and savings. So that includes investing as well. I just didn't list it, but I want at least 50% of our income each month to go to debt, savings, and investing. Um, eventually, once our debt is paid off, I would love to continue that and have and definitely have at least 50% of our income going to savings and investing. I just feel like if you can get to that point and live off of half of what you are making, then um, that sets you up for the future. So I want to start doing that now and trying to, as much as possible, put half of our income towards our goals instead of spending it in our budget. So that is kind of the reason behind this goal and I will be tracking it each month. So the next goal we have, you guys aren't surprised by this one, I'm sure, is to pay off FedLoan 4. I've mentioned this several times in my videos recently, but I really do think that it's possible for us to have FedLoan 4 paid off by the end of June. So I made that the goal for quarter two. This is our number one goal for quarter two. I want to make sure that if none of these other goals happen, at least this one will happen. So um, I'm very excited about this one. I think we can do it and it'll free up a lot of money in our budget to go towards the next debt. So this is just that first, or not really the first because we've paid off other debts, but it's just the next um, hurdle in our journey. And then the more debt that we get paid off, the more money we free up and it kind of, you know, sets that snowball rolling. So you have just more and more money freed up in your budget to put towards the next debt. So it's just going to go faster and faster the more that you pay off. So that's the goal to get this one knocked out so we can pay off the next one. And then the next goal that we have for quarter two is to invest $3,000. So I've talked about this before in a couple of videos as well, but we did decrease Mark's retirement savings through his employer but investing is still very important to me. I've been investing since my 20s, my early 20s, and I want to keep doing that because it has worked out really well for us. And I've seen the power of compound interest. And it's, it's an amazing thing to be able to do in your 20s and 30s is to prioritize investing because it will, you'll never have the time in the market that you have when you're in your 20s and your 30s. So we are still in our 30s. I would like to keep investing, make that a priority. Even though we are paying off debt, it's still important to me. So even though we decreased his contributions, I still want to make sure we're putting at least $1,000 a month towards investing. So that would be $3,000 over the course of quarter two. So if we go a little under $1,000 one month and a little over $1,000 the next month, that's okay. I just want it to average out 
to a thousand per month so that we hit that three thousand dollar mark for quarter two then the next goal that i have is to get our debt balances under one hundred and twenty four thousand. that probably seems like a weird number like why not one hundred and twenty five thousand? but i think our debt balances right now are around 133. i don't know the exact balance as you're watching this because Honestly, I'm filming this video a little bit early because we're going to have some family in town the last week of March. So I needed to get my videos filmed early so that I can not focus on YouTube and kind of just focus on family visiting. So Mark's parents are coming up from Florida to see us. So I want to focus on spending time with them, spending time with the boys while they are on spring break from school. And so I'm filming these videos a little early, so I don't know exactly what my debt balances are going to be at the end of March, but I would say somewhere in the 132, 133 range, because we probably will make another debt payment after I'm filming this video, but we're not going to make anything huge. We already made our huge debt payment for the month. So it'll probably be in that 132, 133 range. So I think getting to 124 would be very realistic because that means we would pay about 3000 per month um, in quarter two. And that means we would pay $9,000 total in quarter two, which based off of the budgets that I've already made for those months, because yes, I'm a nerd and I budget ahead. I think that's possible for us to do that and it'll push us a little bit, but it won't be impossible, impossible, but it also won't be like too easy of a goal. So I think that's a good number and that's why I chose it, even though it's kind of an odd number, even though it's an even number, you know what I'm saying? And then the last financial goal that I made for quarter two is probably the one that I'm the most nervous about. Um, but I feel like I just need to put it out there and say it. So I'm going to try to keep our grocery budget at $1,250 per month in quarter two. And that's low for us, believe it or not. I know that's high for some people, but that is low for us. And I'm, I think we can do it. I, well, I know it's possible for us to do it. It's just a matter of kind of maybe giving up some of the things that we like that aren't necessities. So we really enjoy our snack food. We really enjoy our sodas and our drinks, but those aren't things that we need. So if we can cut back even just a little bit on those, I think that would make this possible because we've been doing like 1300, 1350 per month and we've been able to make that work. So I don't think it's too much of a stretch to make 1250 work, but it's just going to, it's just going to take a tad bit more, um, determination to stick within that budget. But I know it's something that's possible for us to do. We just have to make it happen. So that is all of our financial goals. So now I want to share some of the personal goals that I made. And if you're not into that, don't, don't worry about it. You can feel free to click off this video because I know this is primarily a channel about finances and not a you know personal vlogging channel. So if you don't care about the personal goals, you won't hurt my feelings if you click off. But I did want to share some personal goals with you guys just because these are things that I really would like to work on. And I feel like by putting them out there and talking about them, it makes me feel more accountable. Like I need to make sure these things happen and I'll be more likely to do them if I talk about them. So I don't know, that's probably not a great thing. I should be able to achieve my goals, whether I talk about them with other people or not, but I do think it's helpful to talk about the things that you want to do so that you can hold yourself accountable and that maybe other people can hold you accountable as well. So the first personal goal that I have listed is to run 150 miles over quarter, quarter two. So that is not per month, that's just over those three months. So that would average out to 50 miles per month. Now I don't have to run exactly 50 miles per month. I could do 45 one month, 50 one month, whatever. I just want to make sure I'm running 150 miles over the next quarter. So I actually used to run a lot. I was never like, you know, a professional runner or a college runner, or even, I didn't even run in high school. I started running later after I had my first son, I started doing like obstacle course races with my dad. And I got really into running after that. And then I started doing regular road races and I got really competitive with myself and trying to beat my own times. And I was really into running for a few years, probably from like, I don't know, 20, 2013, 2014, up until like 2019, 2020. And then I kind of um, stopped caring about it as much. I would still run. But honestly, in 2022, when I started my YouTube channel is when my running really went downhill because I felt like I just had other things to do and I didn't have time for it. But I want to make running a priority again because I want to make my health a priority again. I feel like there's a lot of things going on now that I really need to work on. I went to the doctor at the beginning of February. No, the beginning of March. And um, I got my test results back recently and I had high cholesterol and high triglycerides. 
And I feel like I'm still pretty young to be having those issues. I'm 34, which I mean, I know I'm at the age where things start to kind of go downhill and you have to be more proactive about your health, but um, I don't want to just let that go and not do anything about it. I'm kind of at the age where I'm like, okay, I really need to take control of my health. So I'm going to be prioritizing exercise more. And then also with my food, I didn't make this a goal or anything, but I am going to be shifting mostly to a plant-based diet. I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. I don't like to put labels on things, but I'm going to be eating plant-based like 90% of the time because I've done that in the past. So I had a high cholesterol on a test result several years ago and I switched to a plant-based diet and it reversed my high cholesterol. So I know that it works for me. I don't know if that would work for everybody, but it worked for me. And because I know that's worked for me in the past, that is what I want to do. So um, again, I'm not going to completely be like, I'm never eating an animal product again. I can't, I can't do that. That's not realistic for me, but just most of the time when I'm at home, I'm going to be eating plant foods. If I go out to eat, I'm not going to stress about it. If I go over to someone else's house and they prepare me food, I'm not going to stress about it, but it's just when I'm control in control of what I'm eating at home, I'm going to focus on like whole food plant-based meals because I know that's what makes me feel my best. And that's what makes, you know, my test results look their best whenever I go to the doctor. So I will be going back to the doctor in three months to get my cholesterol and triglycerides retested to make sure that what I'm doing is working and that they're going back down to the normal range. So that's kind of why I want to really focus on running. That's why I want to focus on my food. So I'm just making that a big goal for quarter two. And then another goal kind of related to that is I want to do 24 weight training sessions. So that's not a lot. That's just like averages out to two a week, but this is about building some good habits, doing something consistently. I used to weight train a lot as well. When I used to run, um, I would probably work out like six days a week and that didn't phase me at all. Like that was normal for me, but somewhere again, when I started YouTube, I just kind of stopped caring about other things. And I stopped doing these other things that made me happy and made me feel good because I felt like I didn't have time for them. So I want to make sure that I'm running and lifting weights again, because those things make me feel good. They make me look good and they are just so much better for my health. So I, I'm going to just start out with 24 sessions. And then if that goes well, maybe for quarter three, we can increase it a bit. And then the next one I have here is to read three books. So I'd like to read one book each month, but you know, over the quarter, I want to read three books. So if I could do more than that, great. But the reason why I included this is not because I'm going to be reading, um, you know, self-help books or like educational books. If I decide I want to read a book like that, that's fine. But for the most part, I just want to read again because I used to really enjoy it. I used to read a lot and I stopped doing that as well too. So I guess you can kind of see a trend where I've stopped doing these things that I used to really enjoy. And I feel like I can tell that I'm not as happy lately. So I just want to make sure I'm doing the things that make me happy, make me feel good. So I'm making them as goals so that I can ensure that I get them done. The next couple of goals I have are more for like our house. So the second one or the first one I have here for our house is to clean out our garage. So this is something that I've been wanting to do for months and months, but I just haven't done it because, you know, the garage is just a place that you walk through when you come home. It's not a place you spend a lot of time. And also a lot of the things in the garage are not my things. They're marks. Like he has a lot of his tools there. So it's like kind of overwhelming for me to go out there and to clean up someone else's stuff. So I need to really convince him to go out there with me and do it and have him organize his tools. And then I can work on all of the other things and kind of getting rid of things that we no longer need, donating things, um, maybe moving things to other places in the house where they would fit better. But I just feel like we really can't park two cars in our garage right now. We, I always park in the garage and, and Mark parks in the driveway because we just don't have the room because we have too much stuff. So I just want to get that cleared out. I want to make our garage, you know, cleaner and I don't know, just like a nicer place to be, even if we're only walking through it. It's just something that needs to be done periodically. And we haven't really done it. I think I've done it once since we've lived here and we've lived here for almost four years now. So it needs to be done again. And the next thing is to clean out our basement. So it's kind of a similar situation as a garage, except I have cleaned out our basement more frequently. I think I did it like six months ago, but I'm trying to stay on top of that and do it every six months. So we actually don't have a ton of stuff in our basement. We have our like home gym down there. We have weights and a treadmill. And we store our Christmas decorations and Halloween decorations, but that's pretty much it. I think the boys have a few like outdoor toys they use to play in the backyard, but we don't have much else down there. 
or that's all that should be down there. But I feel like we've kind of collected a few other things that need to be either taken to Goodwill or just thrown away. I know we have an old lawnmower that doesn't even work anymore that I need to have come like the trash company come and pick up. And then also the Huskies run through the basement to go into the backyard to go to the bathroom and Huskies shed all the time. And just them running through the basement, they don't even spend time in the basement. There's just like their hair everywhere and I just need to get it cleaned up. So it's just something I have to do every couple of months to make sure we're staying to on top of it. So that is it for our personal goals. I'm very happy with these as well. The best thing about this is that none of these goals really require me to spend money on them. It's just things that I have to put time and effort into doing. So I didn't want to make goals that would take away from our financial goals by doing things that would cost me a lot of money. Like I thought about putting um, for our house goals, like some things like painting, because I do, I would like to paint soon, but I'm like, you know what? I don't really want to be spending the money on that right now. Um, when I can do other things in the house that don't cost me money and we can paint later when maybe some of the debts paid off. So that was kind of like why I came up with these goals as well. They're all things that I can do to improve our home, to improve my life, but they don't cost a lot of money. So um, I think that's a bonus, but I hope you guys are doing well with all of your goals. I know not all of you do quarterly goals, but whether you do quarterly, weekly, monthly, annual goals, whatever it is, I hope that they are going well. If you'd like to tell me how your goals are going in the comments down below, I would love to hear that. Um, I always get very motivated by hearing what other people are doing and it gives me ideas as well. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.